I've been into the debate with creationists here and there in comments, and I've made a few videos debunking stuff like that. And well, part of my thing is I am in the camp of intelligent design, ID, or creationism is not science. It just isn't. And well, part of my thing is I don't want creationism to be taken as science and be taught as science. It is a religion. But anyway, when, I'm, when I've been looking into creationist claims, I started realizing, or at least just for me anyway, I haven't, I haven't really found anything about the history of creationism. Where did it, where did it really start from? And how did it become a thing in our modern day world? I mean, we, we, we have so much mountains and mountains of evidence that evolution is a true thing. There is no evidence for creator. There just isn't. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a video series on how the creationist movement sort of began and this is kind of my introduction to y'all. I'd like to get more uh, feedback from you. Well, let's just take a look at the advent of this movement. Many evangelicals in America believe that young earth creationism is the only authentically biblical position for Christians to hold on origins and that all Christians believe this until they started compromising with Darwin's theory of evolution. This is simply not true. Young earth creationism is relatively new and as recently as a century ago, even fundamentalist Christians saw little reason to reject evolution. Now the most consistent creationist voice at the beginning of the 20th century belonged to the, to the new Seventh-day Adventist movement, which looked into the mid-19th century prophetic writings of Ellen White for guidance. What we call Young Earth Creationism today, as promoted by Answers in Genesis, Creation Ministries International, the Institute for Creation Research, and other groups, it can be traced back to one of White's visions. Ellen White, who lived from 1827 to 1915, was a prophetess whose writings have been widely translated. She experienced a great disappointment on October 22, 1844, when Jesus failed to appear as predicted by William Miller, the leader of her sect. Shortly after, she began receiving visions and was soon at the heart of a new branch of Christianity that now boasts more than 14 million followers in 200 countries. In my next video I'm going to do, I'm going to go into more detail on what these visions were and why I can dismiss them as another false claim or just human error in understanding what our mind can actually make us believe. But because these creationist ideas were basically limited to Seventh-day Adventist biblical interpretation, most Christians outside that group paid no attention to them and many were fine with the idea that evolution was simply God's method of creation. Now, as stated by John Paul II, addressed to the Pontiff Academy October 22, 1996. Today, almost half a century after the publication of the encyclical, fresh knowledge has led to the recognition that evolution is more than a hypothesis. It is indeed remarkable that this theory has been progressively accepted by researchers following a series of discoveries in various fields of knowledge. The co convergence, neither sought nor fabricated, of the results of work that was conducted independently is itself a significant argument in favor of this theory. Also by Pope Benedict XVI on evolution and creationism. The clash between evolution and creationism is an absurdity 
because on one, one hand, there is much scientific proof in favor of evolution, which appears as a reality that we must see and which enriches our understanding of life and being as such. Now, it, this is my opinion, and I think I, I, I want it to be based in fact because my opinion is based on a lot of understanding of how things can be used abusively or non-scientific or, or actually deter what scientific understanding is. And I guess that's what I'm more that's what I'm concerned of the most is how someone can take just someone's interpretation or their vision or whatever they've seen as some sort of a divine thing and really it can be dismissed as just another another vision from the foibles of our minds basically well anyway I am starting to do research on this more and I would like plenty, some of your ideas, if you've got any ideas or know of anything about the creationist movement and how it started, I'd definitely like to hear them. So either email me, I'll leave my email on my description, and or you can just make a comment down here and get a hold of me. Thank you for watching if you made it this far, and subscribe if you haven't, and yeah, and share, like and share. Cheers.